Hello friends! You find me in the midst of laying out the pattern pieces for my 1920s coat project. It is one of the three garments included in this set from the vintage pattern lending library that I've been working my way through. Having already made the dress and tunic, it was finally time to tackle the coat. My fabric of choice is a single curtain panel that I bought from Goodwill. It had been in my fabric stash for well over six years at this point. In the beginning, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to fit all of the pieces of the pattern onto this curtain panel. I even went so far as to rip out all the seams and then iron flat the allowance to give myself as much wiggle room as I could. These little rectangles are for the pocket welts. There were only instructions on how big these pieces should be, so I cut some templates out of cardstock. In the end, I didn't use them for the actual cutting process, but it was nice to have a visual on how much space they were going to take up. The fold of the fabric is pointing towards the bottom of the screen here. Thankfully, only the back piece on the left needed to be placed on the fold, which gave me some freedom in placing the rest of the pieces. That's the piece that ruins everything. The piece that ruins everything is the front facing. It's a weird shape, but it's actually really clever. One of the design features of this pattern is that the collar is meant to stand up and the coat hangs open at the front. These facings will technically be on the inside of the coat and they'll make it look like the fabric continues all the way through. In reality, the inside of the coat will be lined with a different fabric starting at the inside edge of the facings. That is, if I decide to add a lining at all. Oh, there it is. This whole process took well over 10 minutes and could easily have been avoided if I'd consulted the layout diagram that's included with every pattern, but I digress. Cutting this fabric was a breeze, since the weave is pretty loose and the fabric itself has a nice mid-weight to it. But as I was cutting, I began to notice that the edges were prone to fraying. So I set my machine to stitch setting number 6 and added some reinforcement stitches inside the seam allowance of every single piece. Why stitch number six in particular? I don't think I had a reason per se, but it got the job done as you can see. The front pieces feature a dart near the neckline, so the first order of business was to sew those up. My tailor's tacks are improving with every project. For this one, I quadrupled the amount of thread to ensure that they would stay put. The edge stitches that I added to keep everything from fraying also helped keep many of these tacks in place. Once the darts were in place, I ironed them flat, pointing them inwards towards the sleeves. The front pieces of the coat required a tiny bit of ease at the shoulder seam. The loose weave of the fabric made it really easy to ease, so I went ahead and pinned the pieces together before pulling the gathering strings. I find that having the pieces pinned together like this takes the guesswork out of determining how much ease is necessary, but it doesn't work in every scenario, so I'm happy to use it wherever I can. My machine does this funky thing where it always starts with a forward stitch before it back stitches. I have to take that into account whenever I hit the back stitch button, but by now I'm used to it. Before ironing the shoulder seams flat, I decided to power through the side seams as well. Interestingly, the notches on the side seams don't exactly line up. They're off by meh, not much, but enough that it's noticeable. But there's no mention of easing in the instructions, and the length of the pieces match, so I decided not to worry about it. After that, it was back to the ironing board. If you've been following my channel at all, you might be wondering, Caitlin, you're not calling this project a mock-up. Could it be that you're finally making a garment for real? That's a very astute observation. Technically, this is a mock-up, since I hadn't used this pattern before, but I had a hunch, even before I started, that this would be a coat I would want to wear. My previous mock-ups were made with no intention of ever wearing in public, and so even though I planned to make another coat in velvet and faux fur in the future, I treated this project as the real deal. Spoiler alert, I did make that second coat, which you can see photos of on my Instagram, because it's already done.
In my next video, I'll be working on adding the collar and facing pieces. Until then, here's some footage of Sophie being the Kitty Queen. Thanks for watching. See you next time.